I posted a quotation from Augustine. What had happened, and, and, and some folks find this interesting, so let me just tell you what happened. Uh, when William posted this, this, uh, this particular video blog, um, he mentioned two citations that Robertson Genis used in our, in our debate on the Mass in 19... Was that 99? I think that was 99. I think Mass was 99 and Justification was 2000. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Because I think the papacy debate was 98, as I recall. So, anyway. And uh, I had dealt with the, with the assertions, anyways, during the course of the debate. Uh, but I did not have the citations in front of me. So... As I explained on the video, you know, it would be nice if I had nothing else to do to go back over every debate and look up every single reference that every single opponent I've ever had has ever used and um, and go through all those things. But when you're doing as many different things and, and addressing as many different subjects as I do, you just don't have that, uh, that luxury to do that. And so <clears throat> I had actually uh, gone back to the Tertullian um, citation. I'm sorry, the origin citation, not Tertullian. Uh, the origin citation, and uh, I had you, you do what you have to what you have to do here. Uh, I had uh, here for those of you who are looking on the webcam. Uh, here's uh, St. Genesis uh, book. I looked it up in there, and then of course I found out he had taken it from where else but William Jurgens, um, the the best quote sort of citation source for for Roman Catholics. And I discovered that neither one of them provided almost any context whatsoever, so I wanted the context. So I did two things. I ordered, here's uh, Origins homilies on Genesis and Exodus, putting it up to the camera here for people, uh, from the Fathers of the Church set, translated by Ronard uh, Heine. And uh, so I ordered that in. But then I had a friend of mine, because I wanted to do this a little bit quicker, once I had ordered the book in, I had a friend of mine uh, who's in seminary, uh, go to his very nice seminary library, track the same resource down, and use the uh, scan to PDF uh, function of their copier there uh, to send me the relevant material even before I got the book. So I had to be able to examine the context before I made a comment about it. Um, I'm, I don't get the feeling that that's normally what my opponents do, but that's, uh, that's what I did. So I had that material already. And then a couple nights ago, a fellow uh, came into channel and started asking about the other citation, which is from Augustine, and his commentary on the Psalter. <clears throat> and uh, it was talking about worshiping, worshiping um, in the context, as Sejanus placed it, of, uh, of the Eucharist. And uh, specifically, the, uh, let me see here. <clears throat> and because he walked here in very flesh and gave that very flesh for us to eat for our salvation, and no one eateth that flesh unless he hath first worshipped. We have found out in what sense such a footstool of our Lord's may be worshipped, and not only that we sin not in worshipping it, but that we sin in not worshipping. And so that was used in the context of, see, this is adoration of the Eucharist, which demonstrates they believe in transubstantiation and they believe that the host had been changed in the body and blood of Christ in the same way that modern Roman Catholics do. So the fellow came in the channel, started asking about it. I was really busy with something else, and it was sort of one of those brain-dead things where I'm fixing something on the computer where you have to keep opening one file, fix it, close, opening one file, fix it, close type of a thing. So it was late at night, and I, sometimes I just get tired. I just didn't want to do it. <clears throat> I didn't want to you know, dig into it. But old Micah comes along. Thanks a lot, Micah. And uh, pulls up the citation. So now I'm stuck. Now I gotta dump everything I'm doing, and I gotta go. Now I gotta go look at this because Micah has 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 destroyed my hiding uh, place. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, so I started digging into it, and we found it online, and uh, started looking at it there. Got out the uh, the commentary itself, and. Uh, you can go to my, my uh, if you want to see the whole thing. But the context is, is really odd. It is, uh, Augustine is dealing with an issue that I don't think is an issue to begin with. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I, he's, he's dealing with this, this discussion uh, about God's footstool. And fall down before his footstool, for he is holy. What are we to fall down before? His footstool, the hupapadion. 
And it says, uh, then he, he quotes another text from Isaiah, The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Doth he then bid us worship the earth, since in another passage it is said, it is God's footstool? How then shall we worship the earth, when the scripture saith openly, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God? Yet here it saith, fall down before his footstool, and explain to us what his footstool is. It says, the earth is my footstool. I'm sorry, but he missed it. I, I mean... What does it mean to fall down before God's footstool? You're not worshiping the footstool. You're worshiping the person who is on the throne. I mean, that's obvious. Uh, that's, that's, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, Augustine was not infallible, and this, this just isn't good exegesis uh, whatsoever of the original meanings and tying things together and stuff like that. So the whole conversation in this, in this commentary is brought about by something that really isn't overly relevant at that point. But that's where you get into the, that's how he brings Christ into this particular text and how uh, he took upon him earth from earth because flesh is from earth and he received flesh from the flesh of Mary. And that's then the quote, because he walked here in very flesh and gave that very flesh to us to eat for our salvation. Uh, and no one eateth that flesh unless he hath first worshipped. It's the worshipping of the footstool, which is the worshipping of the flesh of Jesus. And none of this, by the way, is specifically about Eucharistic theology or anything else, but it's being read into it. But this is the part that wasn't included by Robertson Jennison, and his citation, um, so on and so forth. Because after it says, uh, we sin and not worship me, it says, but doth the flesh give life? Our Lord himself, when he was speaking in praise, the same earth said, it is a spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. But when our Lord praised it, he was speaking of his own flesh, and he had said, Except a man eat my flesh, he shall have no life in him. Some disciples of his, about seventy, were offended and said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? And they went back and walked no more with him. It seemed unto them hard that he said, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and have, you have no life in you. They received it foolishly, the thought of it carnally, and imagined the Lord would cut off parts from his body and give unto them. Man, read some medieval Eucharistic stuff, and that's exactly what they t- they think, too. Um, and give it unto them, they said, this is a hard saying. It was they who were hard, not the saying, for unless they had been hard and not meek, they would have said unto themselves, he saith not this without reason, but there must be some latent mystery herein. They would have remained with him, softened, not hard, and would have learnt that from him which they who remained when the disciples departed learned. For when twelve disciples had remained with him on their departure, these remaining followers suggested to him, as if in grief for the death of the former, that they were offended by his words and turned back. But he instructed them and saith unto him, It is the spirit that quickeneth, but the flesh profiteth nothing. The words I have spoken unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Uh, if you ever try quoting those words to a Roman Catholic about John 6, you get your head handed to you on a platter, but uh, Augustine was doing it. Understand spiritually what I have said. Ye are not to eat this body which ye see, nor to drink that blood which they sh- who will crucify me shall pour forth. Is that not the exact assertion of the Roman Catholic Church? That it is the very body, soul, blood, and divinity of Jesus Christ. But Augustine says, Ye are not to eat this body which ye see, nor to drink that blood which, ye, which uh, they who will crucify me shall pour forth. I have commended unto you a certain mystery, spiritually understood. It will quicken, although it is needful that this be visibly celebrated, yet it must be spiritually understood. And so, actually read the context, and it doesn't say anything supportive of the utilization that that St. Genesis was using. So, uh, I didn't, what I didn't get to do last night, and I'll I'll put it into a, a video today, but I wanted to read this. What I didn't get to do last night was to then quote a Roman Catholic source in support of my own reading of the text, since William likes to uh, dismiss whatever I have to say. The Catholic Encyclopedia, uh, available online, speaking of the development of Eucharistic theology over time, said, uh, speaking of Augustine, the variety of extreme views just mentioned requires an attempt be made at a reasonable and unbiased explanation whose verification is to be sought for and found in the acknowledged fact that a gradual process of development took place in the mind of St. Augustine. Now, remember what William said? Every single one of the early writers believed what I believe. Um, Here is a Roman Catholic scholarly source saying, well, not quite. 
No one will deny that certain expressions occur in Augustine as forcibly realistic as those of Tertullian and Cyprian over his intimate literary friends, Ambrose, Opt Optatus of Milevi, Hilary, and Chrysostom. On the other hand, it is beyond question that owing to the determining influence of Origen and the Platonic philosophy, which, as is well known, attached but slight value to visible matter and the sensible phenomena of the world, Augustine did not refer what was properly real in the Blessed Sacrament to the flesh of Christ, but transferred it to the quickening principle, the spirit, i.e. to the effects produced by a worthy communion. A logical consequence of this was that he allowed to caro, the, the, uh, the flesh of Christ, as the vehicle and antitype of rest, which is the uh, real uh, in the Blessed Sacrament. Remember, this is a Roman Catholic uh, source. Not indeed a mere symbolical worth, but at best a transitory, intermediary, and subordinate worth, and place the flesh and blood of Christ present under the appearances of bread and wine in too decided an opposition to his natural historical body. Since Augustine was a strenuous defender of personal cooperation and effort in the work of salvation <laughs> and an enemy to mere mechanical activity and superstitious routine, he omitted insisting upon a lively faith in the real personality of Jesus in the Eucharist and called attention to the spiritual efficiency of the flesh of Christ instead. Notice, even they have to go, well, well, okay, he didn't quite you know, say it the way we'd like to say it. And in reality, what they don't mention here is the emphasis that Augustine himself made on the fact that the physical body of Jesus Christ is located in heaven, not on earth. And that the church, to use his own words, is deprived of the physical presence of Jesus. Now, when I read one of my first Roman Catholic books introducing me to Roman Catholicism many, many years ago, uh, one of the big things that they pointed out was you get to visit with God when you come to the church. There in the tabernacle, God is physically present with us in the physical body of Jesus. Uh, well, that's not exactly what Augustine had to say. Uh, he defended the reality of the physical resurrection of Christ by demonstrating that his body was in heaven, not upon earth. And so... Uh, just a matter of allowing everything to be quoted uh, in context and looking at these things uh, that, uh, that is helpful.